How's it going everybody? It's Master1994 here and today we're going to take a look at my Protection Paladin PvP build and then we're going to watch some 2k plus arena gameplay. Now as always there is a table of contents in the description below so if you would like to skip any part of the video go ahead and take a look at that table of contents and you should find exactly what you want to see. Here we can see my current ratings and do note that as a protection paladin I was only playing 3v3s so when we get to the gameplay portion we will be watching 3v3 arenas at about 21 to 2200 MMR. So let's take a look at the build. Now as always my build isn't necessarily based around any meta and instead it's based around my preference and my playstyle. So let's get started. Firstly, I'm using Holy Shield. Now, the other talents in this row don't really have any PvP usefulness. So, Holy Shield's probably the best choice anyway, but it's also very flavorful. And it's one of those talents that kind of dates back to vanilla. So, it's just a cool talent anyway. Going to increase our damage a little bit. And it's going to increase our survivability by a pretty good amount, especially against those spellcasters. Next, we're using Crusader's Judgment. Now, as we're prod, we're not doing a ton of damage, but Judgment is usually our top damage dealer. So, this is important anyway, but it also has a lot of synergy with some other talent choices that we're going to see here. One of which being Fist of Justice. So, this is always my talent choice in the CC row. But, you know, Judgment reducing the cooldown of our stun by 6 seconds. With this ability, with this talent rather, our stun can be on a bay about 20 to 30 second cooldown, which is amazing, especially tied in with Shield of Virtue, which we'll talk about later. Next, I'm using Blessing of Spell Warding or Cavalier. Now, basically, Spell Warding is the magic version of Bop. So if I feel like magic damage is going to be more of a threat to us, I'm always going to pick spell warding. However, if we're fighting double physical DPS, maybe a warrior and a hunter, I'm going to stick with cavalier to keep that bop. And this way I have more mobility, which seems more useful than this very weak retribution aura. Next, we are always going to be using Hand of the Protector. Now without this talent, Light of the Protector is a self-heal only. So when we pick up this talent, we are drastically increasing our support healing, which is going to increase, um, which is going to help our healers a lot. And it's really a core ability when you're using a prop paladin in 3v3s. You're going to be doing a lot of healing and your healing numbers are going to be comparable to your healers and it's going to be mostly because of this ability. Next we're using Judgment of Light. Again, a little bit of synergy with Judgment and the other Judgment talents, but this is just helping us, you know, anyone that's doing damage, it's just going to help them keep, stay topped off that much easier. It's not a ton of healing, but again, less pressure on our healers. Now this last row, I think you have some choice here. I'm using Righteous Protector because it reduces the cooldown of our Hand of the Protector, which again, huge support healing ability. And it also reduces the cooldown on our Avenging Wrath, which increases our damage and our healing by a pretty significant amount. So this can be used offensively or defensively. There's a lot of utility here. But I could very easily see people using Seraphim instead. I think you could have a lot of support and a lot of damage um, buff with this ability. But for my playstyle, my preference, Righteous Protector. As with all of the Paladin specializations, I'm going to be using Gladiator's Medallion here just because we have other forms of CC breaks. So I think having an additional medallion just adds to that. That's pretty important. Next, we're going to use Shield of Virtue. Now, this has a ton of synergy with your stun. And this is, one of again, one of those core talents that we're going to be using as a protection paladin. This really allows you to go for healers a lot more. And it, it really makes it where you are going to be sticking to healers a lot, just in general, you as a protection paladin. Um, so the idea is to have a stun every 20 to 30 seconds. And on every second stun... You're going to combo that stun with a Shield of Virtue for Second Silence. So it's um, 
preferably on a healer. You're going to stun the healer for six seconds and then silence them for four. And then you're going to stun them for six seconds. And then the next cycle, you're going to get to stun for six seconds and silence for for four again so you're you're kind of going through this cycle of every 20 to 30 seconds you're going to have a six second stun and then a 10 second cc chain that obviously does not break from damage so if you're using this on healers and your d you and your dps are both attacking the healer a lot of the times you can kill healers in that 10 second cc chain especially as you play dampening which you're going to be doing because again you have a ton of healing um, and that's 10 second CC chain obviously doesn't even take like interrupts into consideration. So you can really lock down healers with some of the protection paladin abilities. Next we're using judgments of the pure. This is again some synergy with the other judgment talents, especially Crusader's Judgment. More healing for the entire group, less pressure on the healers, you know, judgments of the pure, judgment of light hand of the protector and all of your other utility like your bubbles your defensives your sacrifice all these things it's going to make it very difficult for the enemy team to kill you or one of your teammates lastly we're going to be using guardian of the forgotten queen now essentially this just puts a divine shield on you or one of your teammates for 10 seconds and it's very important it's going to you know make them immune to damage and cc's all that good stuff you can use this offensively with your DPS, though I like to keep it defensive because I feel like as I used it offensively, it kind of hurt more than it helped. Sometimes we didn't get that kill, even though I used the bubble on the DPS, and then we didn't have the defensive bubble when we needed it. Um, but anyway, just do note that the you summon the queen with this ability, and the queen puts the bubble on the teammate or yourself. So the queen can be CC'd. So just know whether it's AoE or single target CC, the queen can be CC'd, and if the queen gets CC'd, that bubble goes away. So sometimes the bubble's not going to last all 10 seconds, but it's still very strong. There's still a lot of utility here, and it's still going to help your healers catch up in a lot of situations. As for stats, we are going to go with mastery first, then haste, then versatility, then critical strike. And I'm going to briefly explain this. As always, if you don't want to hear this part, this may be a good time to hit up that table of contents. So, we're going with Mastery first because Mastery increases our attack power by a pretty good chunk. And that attack power is going to increase our damage and our healing. So just overall making us stronger. Next, we're going to be using Haste. We all know how well Haste works right now, and Haste is going to reduce the cooldown of some of our abilities, including Hand of the Protector and Judgment. So, very important. Also, we have a lot of abilities to juggle, so reducing that global cooldown is relatively important. Next, we're using Versatility, just because it's better than Critical Strike. Obviously, Critical Strike has 50% um, effectiveness in PvP, so it is last on our list. As far as our Azurite traits go, we're picking up any Azurite traits that are really going to increase our damage. Um, those survivability traits are important as well because sometimes we are um, the kill target. Sometimes we are taking a pretty good amount of damage. But I'm taking up a lot of those traits that passively increase our stats again. Um, any of those traits that increase our damage are very important. There is one pretty important retribution Azerite trait that I would like to mention. If you come across Indomitable Justice, you probably want to pick it up. It increases our judgment damage by a pretty decent amount. And again, we're using a lot of judgments, and it's a man, main damaging ability anyway. So it's a very good Azerite trait. But in general, just anything that's increasing our damage or our survivability. So let's take a look at this first clip here. Now I chose this game as the first clip because I think it really highlights a lot of the strengths of the prop paladin and it's a really good game. Other than right here, I'm kind of tunneling a little bit. I don't notice that that paladin bops that warlock and I could have very easily, you know, clipped that warlock with the blood elf racial and dispelled it. And we probably would have been able to lock down the warlock's burst a little bit more and I wouldn't had 
have had to use nearly as many cooldowns, most likely. But other than that, great game. Notice the role that I'm playing as a prop paladin. Other than right there, the paladins obviously switched to Avenging Crusader, so I'm going for the Warlock to kind of slow down incoming damage um, because we're not going to get a kill after the paladin just used Avenging Crusader. However, other than that, I'm really sticking to the Paladin. I'm comboing those stuns and those silences and those interrupts. I'm CCing this Paladin, doing a little bit of pressure. But notice who our kill target is. It is not the Paladin. My DPS teammate is going very heavily on the Warlock here. And that's your role as a prop Paladin. You know, you're stunning, you're silencing, you're locking enemy healers. Also notice... How I'm really cycling my defensive cooldowns. You know, they're not able to secure a kill because I just have so many cooldowns in my arsenal. Now take a look at the rogue's health. When you're the kill target, Holy Shield can really shine. This rogue is taking damage, so much damage. We aren't actively attacking the rogue. His health is so low purely because of Holy Shield, which is important because he's actually the first enemy to die in this game. We've already popped the trinket on the Paladin. I just silenced the Paladin and forced that bubble. And now as soon as that bubble goes down, I'm ready to stun him. I interrupt that flash of light and the warrior gets the kill on that rogue. And that really showcases the prop Paladin. There's not a ton of damage here, but we have so much healing. We have so many defensive cooldowns to support our team. And we have so much crowd control potential. After a few minutes of that, a lot of healers are going to have a hard time surviving, especially when you have a DPS teammate as strong as a Fury Warrior that can just put out so much pressure by themselves. Now, as the prop paladin, I'm very often the main source of crowd control, and I wasn't voicing at all in any of these games, so we didn't really line up CC a lot here. But right here, the stars align. The Warrior and I have a pretty awesome CC chain, and we're going to see a secure a kill because of that. So, especially if you guys are voicing, I think there is so much potential as far as rating climbing goes with this composition. Also, you'll notice anytime we're fighting um, very dangerous casters, such as a Fire Mage or a Destro Lock, that is usually the main kill target. Just an important note. Outside of that, the enemy healers are very often the kill targets. And I think this is a pretty good game to kind of show that. Do notice, however, the game's been going on a while. Damping starting to stack relatively high. This could be anyone's game because the enemy DPS are putting on a lot of pressure. I'm having to cycle my cooldowns now. It's very difficult to kind of stay alive, but we're just stunning as often as we can. And with Fist of Justice, we're having stuns every 20 to 30 seconds, and it's really helping a lot. This shaman's definitely feeling the pressure in those CC chains. And here, we stun him a final time and get that kill. So again, just awesome stun CCs. I think this is another really strong game. Again, we see a lot of holy shield damage because, again, I'm the kill target. We see a lot of cooldown usage, you know, defensive cooldowns. And notice here we really get to see Hand of the Protector shining. It seems like every time I use Hand of the Protector, my health goes up by 40k. I mean, it's a huge heal and on a relatively short cooldown. And it really, you know, with Hand of the Protector, I've already said this, but our healing at the end of the game, our heal numbers are going to be comparable to the other healers and sometimes even exceed the other healers. Right here, a very good 10 second CC chain, and we get rid of that ice block and that bubble. We make them waste both cooldowns. And I think the way we secure this kill at the end of this clip is very cool. I really like the end of this clip. So as we're watching this game, I'd like to kind of take this time to talk about why the Fury Warrior has so much synergy with the Prop Paladin. So I pretty much exclusively played with Fury Warriors, and in this video, we are only going to watch me playing with this Fury Warrior. And you know, it kind of all started with 
if it's not broken, don't fix it. I mean, we've all seen this composition as we've climbed the ladder, I'm sure. Fury Warrior, Prop Paladin, Healer. And there is actually a lot of synergy here. First off, think about how tanky the composition is. You know, not only do you have a healer, but you have a prop paladin that can do healer heals. I mean, our numbers, again, can be very comparable to actual healer roles. And then we have a fury warrior that has a ton of self-healing. All in all, the composition is very tanky. And it kind of makes it difficult for the enemy team to choose a good kill target. And in a lot of situations, the prop paladin is the best kill target. And then, you know, there's the Holy Shield damage, which is kind of nice. But really think about your role as a prop paladin. You know, you obviously have the support, the heals, the defensive cooldowns, freedoms, keeping everyone alive, that kind of stuff. However, you are a main CC'er. You have 10 seconds of CC that doesn't break from damage. And you get your CC chain Pretty often, it's not on a very large cooldown, and it's all instant cast, very easy to set up. So what synergizes best with that? A DPS that does a ton of burst damage. Right here, we're going to see it. A stun into a four second silence, boom. A kill, just that easy. And the Fury Warrior plays that role very well. The Fury Warrior can stick to the targets very easily, in fact, the Fury Warrior, this one that I've been playing with, actually told me not to even freedom him. He doesn't need it. He can get to the target without freedom. Keep freedom for myself. Keep freedom for the healer if we need it. There's a ton of, again, self-healing and most importantly, that damage. Just so much consistent damage and so much potential burst damage for those large CC chains. As far as healers go, I really liked having a Shaman, just because we know the Shaman heals a lot right now. They're very strong. There's also a lot of support there. I also liked having a Mistweaver Monk. Because of the Stance of the Crane, they were able to get into melee range with us. They were able to do some damage, add to the pressure, and it felt like we were securing kills a little bit easier with a Mistweaver Monk. So I feel like we've covered a lot in a relatively short amount of time. So now let's talk about something that I haven't really talked about in any of my previous videos. And that is why you maybe would or wouldn't want to play with this specialization that we're showcasing. In my opinion, the Protection Paladin is by far the most unique specialization that is currently relevant to the Arena Ladder. I mean, you have so much healing, you have so many defensive cooldowns that can be used on yourself and your teammates that you very often feel like a healer. But you bring so much more to the table. You know, you're a melee DPS in a sense, though you don't do a ton of damage. And you bring that pressure, you have the interrupts. You also have, you know, your serious CC chain that we've talked so much about in this video. You also have a pretty awesome burst cooldown, you know, that increases both your damage and your healing by a pretty significant amount. So really, you're the perfect example of a true hybrid specialization. You have a lot of control of the game with all your CCs, all your bubbles, your, you know, death prevention abilities. The only thing that really comes close to this type of hybrid is a disciplined priest. So if you like that playstyle, if you like doing damage and healing at the same time, but you think you would like to, you know, add a melee twist to it and maybe have more control of the battlefield while you're playing it, the Protection Paladin might be a good choice for you. I think the biggest downside to the Protection Paladin is maybe if you're not as patient. You know, a lot of your games will last a while you'll get farther into dampening sometimes i mean we saw a clip in this video where it took like 13 minutes <laughs> to kill the enemy healer you know some of these games take a while and on top of that you know finding groups can be difficult you know you're not gonna run out of fury warriors a lot of fury warriors know the potential 
of this composition. But healers, they're going to see this and say, that's a tank. Why do I want to play with a tank? I'm keeping everyone alive. I don't need someone that's tanky. You know, they don't all know how amazing this composition can be. So, you know, if you're not as patient, maybe you wouldn't want to play the Protection Paladin. That being said, I think it's a very viable specialization, and I would highly recommend trying it out. I'm going to conclude here. So as always, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And if not, let me know what I need to improve on. I always like hearing from you guys. Enjoy the rest of the video, and I'll catch you all next time.